This is a quick video to show how to use the uh, secret feature allowing you to replace the entities within a level. And it's great if you want to do it on batch, like rename an entire set of entities from one folder to another. So it starts quite simply. There's our level, which has obviously got some entities in it that uh, are in different places now. We're going to run Game Guru and we're going to load that level in quite simply. And what's going to happen is it's going to fail to find some entities and then show them as missing and then produce a .log file. So first of all I'll show you the failed load. So if we go to open, scroll, find our level, at least a map. So it's loading in the entities but it won't find some. In fact it probably won't find any of them because the folder, the parent folder has been changed. And what you'll see on the left is a lot of square boxes with red plus signs all saying missing. But what's also happened is it's produced a file called .log. And as you can see, it's produced all this. Each one of these lines here is an entity it couldn't find. It couldn't find this one, couldn't find this one, and so on and so forth. So this is what you do. This is the clever secret bit. Change the dot .log to dot .replace. And this is a new kind of file which is going to instruct a software to change this entity designation to some other location. And the mistake at the moment is Megapack 1 was the old name and we changed it to Megapack 01. So I'm not going to do this manually because there's quite a few lines. What I am going to do, because I'm using a really cool uh, text editor called Notepad++, I can copy the bit I want to change, go to a replace function, and replace equals replace entity bank slash slash, which is quite unique, so it's not going to be accidentally replaced with this entity bank. Da, 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 da. But that's insufficiency because I also want to change the parent entity. So I increase the scope of what I'm going to replace to that. Because what I want to do is change the entity bank mega pack one to entity bank mega or one. You see? So it's going to replace every instance of that with every instance of this. So we click replace all. 93 occurrences, so I'm glad I didn't have to do that manually. And then the last thing you do, just to make sure that the carriage returns take, is make sure the first line is empty, and then put a space in between every single line. You can actually save this .replace file, so you don't have to do this more than once. If, for example, somebody keeps sending you an old file with old entity designations over and over, you can just whip out the dot .replace file. So there you go. Everyone on its own line with a space. So we'll save that dot .replace. Then all you've really got to do is go back and load it again. Only this time it will know the correct location of the entities, which is 0, 1 instead of 1. Take a bit longer because it's actually loading in all the graphics and textures, things like that. It's a good sign that it's taking a little longer. Then on the left hand side, we should be able to see the actual entities. Success. And here, look, it showed uh, it produced a log file. So, yes, we've got some entities, but if we scroll down, I suspect. There you go, we've got one missing one there. That looks like just one. But we can confirm that by going to this, and you can notice it's now produced the .log file again, but a much smaller one. Now, there was something specified called entity, tibank, decals, blacksmoke.fpe, and if we wanted to, we could hunt what was the entity, and then we can give it its correct location, or give it an alternative entity if you want. It doesn't really matter as long as it's, uh, it's fine that it's going to be in the same place, but a different entity. You could even use it to replace entities that do exist in a level, and you want to just en masse replace one entity with another entity because you actually know its full path designation. So we'll leave that now. We're not too concerned about, well, I'm not too concerned about that. Somebody else might be. So we'll delete that log file. Uh, because we don't want replace to keep kicking in every single time, just put underscore before it. That will make it, uh, it, it won't actually run that next time. And then we can finally click save. 
and it actually saves the level with the new entity designations. You don't need the dot replace anymore. So you can just basically hand this back to whoever wants the level, providing they've got the new entities in the new locations, this level will just load in fine. And uh, because there was an entity that wasn't recognized, GameGuru has this, this clever cleanup process where it doesn't save an entity that doesn't exist, so it simply removes it from its list and then it triggers a reload, so it's a nice clean list, so there's no uh, sort of stragglers hanging around that just cluttering up a nice clean level. So it automatically loads it back in. And there you go. That level is now ready to ship out and it's using locations that are all the new entities. And if we go to add new entity, there's our new Mega Pack 01. And those are all the entities that we have pointed this level towards. And it's as simple as that. Simply create a dot replace file, loading the level as normal, and uh, your level will be back kicking and screaming and ready for you to continue adding wonderful things so hopefully this was useful a nice hidden feature of game guru and i'll see you at the next video bye